I did not. Hello, everyone. Hello, Aiden. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Also, Crowley, um, if the DMCA weren't so uh, awful on Twitch now, it would be much easier to put music on stuff, I, I will admit. Basically, yeah. So with the DMCA, you you have to you have to use non copyrighted music, which is you have to go to libraries that exist for just that music. And the funny thing is, is every time I've tried to do that in the past, we have complaints from people that it's not modern music. Cor correct. They want to hear like every time Dave hears, it, he goes, "Put some ACDC on." I'm like, oh, I can't do that. There you go. <laughs> How outrageous was the cost? Wow. Well, thank you, Margaret and Rathmore. That's uh, <laughs> I. Uh, I'm not. I don't don't know that I could sing Bon Jovi. I'm not. I'm not there yet. That's that's I think that's what they want me to sing is living on the prayer. Wait, Peace Talks. Is that the latest uh, Justin Files book? Miss Demp? I'm a massive Dresden fan. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Yeah, that that's mine. And uh, Dave is actually calling me, so hold on a second. <laughs> Peeps, it's Anne, and welcome to your Tuesday edition of Reaper Pro Tips with me and disembodied voice Justin, who you have just heard talking. And yes, we wish you could stream music, and no, we can't because it's bloody expensive, and if we did stuff that nobody knew, then nobody would like it. Yes, exactly what Justin told you. <laughs> I wish. Now, this does open up you guys to being able to stream your own music, however, in your own home while I am talking. I won't get mad at you, I promise. You could put on some Bon Jovi yourself, or some Queensryche, or some ACDC, or some, I don't know. Uh, for me, it's Def Leppard if you're going to go in that genre direction, but you know, I'm a Def Leppard fan girl, so. <laughs> I can stream music if I occasionally criticize or praise it because I'm using it for educational purposes. Is that right, Hagar? <laughs> He's not getting yelled at by Dave. Dave is a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, Def Leppard's, uh, of all of the hard rock 80s bands, Def Leppard is my fave. 
so all right here let me get let me get my organization down here oh oh and i forgot to take my vitamin one second once i'm gonna take vitamins on can on camera look guys you need to take your multivitamin every day we don't get enough nutrition <laughs> Oh, Alfred GG, good. You can question me. Go ahead. Hagar, I do. You can send me a message on here. I'm actually doing one um, for a patron right now, um, but my commission slots, I'm probably not going to get to anything I take on now for a few months because I've got some Dark Sword stuff coming. I've got this, this commission already. Um, but yes, definitely. Like, touch base with me on uh, Discord. Send me a Discord message. I'll get it. Yay! Canadian Gecko, hey! Been a long time, I think, since I've seen you on here. Too many other pills to take daily? Gergi, yeah, I, I took some probiotics, too. I Technically, I can take a lot more vitamins, but... And I do need to take my, uh, my actual meds later, but after stream. Uh, ethereal sort of ghost, ghosty look. Um, usually, that'll be a pale blue or a pale... Uh, pale blue green and there are a couple of uh colors alpha gg that are good for that and they're named that way like spectral glow for example um what i tend to do is just start with those colors because they're usually quite pale and uh highlight them up by adding pure white and that's going to give you that kind of lord of the rings ghost color if you do the kind of blue green um one second oh you ordered brushes we ordered brushes yesterday too margaret um, but yeah, and it depends too if you want just parts of the model to look ghostly, if you want the whole thing to look like a ghost. If you want the whole thing to look like a ghost, choose like a, a greenish yellow, greenish blue, or pale blue are usually the colors that people use, and they highlight them with pure white. Uh, no, Grim. Um, I do regular commissions for Jim. At Dark Sword. So, let's see here. Oh, you were on vacation. Well, good, Canadian Gecko. I'm glad. I hope you enjoyed it. What has nine arms and sucks? Yeah, I know, Astley. I, I did not believe in that, though. I really liked them. Oh, fun. You've got a cocktail there, Gurgi. Toss in some gin and tonic and just, you know, slam it down. I did not say that. <laughs> that was an... See, this Def Leppard thing is making me regress to my high school humor. This is bad. Let's not go here. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible, Hagar. Just parts? Well then, Alpha, um, you probably want to do kind of a blended fade into those colors. Like, choose what spectral energy color it's going to be. Um, paint the rest of the model, like, you know, the way you would. And then where you're going to start to fade it into the um, the spectral color is essentially you've got to blend from whatever your, your normal quote-unquote color is into that spectral color. Um, I personally would do layering for that, not wet blending, um, but you need to have that kind of faded out effect. So it's, it's, uh, I don't remember if I've done one like that, actually. I guess we could do that with something. We could paint something like half spectral, half normal. I'd have to find the right color for it. Raphael 8404 brushes sold out everywhere and aren't on Amazon. Oh no, that's bad, Krispies. Now you've reminded me of the joke. I'm going to remember it all the time, Ashley. Thanks. I could have forgotten that part of high school. <laughs> yeah, do a, do a faded ghost effect on somebody. We got to turn somebody into a ghost. I got to choose, choose which model um, gets to be dead. I can do that. I've got some models that could, that could do that. Actually, I think I've got a Wraith model even. I think I've got Julie's female Wraith. I've got some other metal uh, models, so maybe we'll do it with that. That actually would be great. I'll look for that. Let me take a, let me grab a, a sticky note, guys, and remind me. Because actually, that sounds exciting. I would like to do that maybe tomorrow and, and the next day. So let's do, um, grab Julie. I'll have to grab it and prep it. Wraith, prep. There we go. Just need to write a note to myself so that I make sure that I make it a priority after the stream. So now we have it. Awesome. All right. Well, let's start painting. And uh, they're just dying to have that done. Hagar, you are losing points. You are losing points here. Pun damage. And you are, you are like XP, like 50 DKP minus something like that. <laughs> All right.
All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it, because I have energy today. And when Anne has energy, it's time to faint. But yes, yes, those are terrible. Alrighty, so let's see here. We do not need skin tones anymore. I can put that in my, my pile of paints of doom here. But I think I'm going to do some NMM today. I'm going to do some uh, silver NMM on her scythe. And I'm going to try to show you guys how to introduce colors from the environment into that scythe. I've got a little bit of cleanup left to do on this. Sometimes bones can be a little hard to clean up. And you just have to use this very gently, just the side of an X-Acto. And you can sometimes just scrape off the little particles. Here, let me zoom in on her. Zoomies. We need zoomies. Zoomies! And then we need focuses. I am in that sort of mood today. And I also, uh, you may have noticed, uh, pretty much uh, quick finished the dress last, uh, last night. So there we go, little girl. All right, so there we are. So I added uh, highlights to the rest of the dress last night so you guys wouldn't have to watch me paint stripes anymore. Um, I did more highlighting and shading on the dress and pretty much uh, got it to the point where it's, uh, it's good. Hey, Coops, thanks for the resub. Man, we are going to have... Yes, more dots, Hager. Um, and whelps. More whelps. Um, and I'm back. And you're back. You weren't fired, right? Uh, no, no. Quite the opposite, actually. Um, oh, more work? Uh, yeah. Well, I just placed the uh, just placed the giant, giant, giant expensive order for all the equipment for the new studio. So. Oh, excitement! Excitement! I can't wait to see the new studio. Eventually, I will get back down there when it's safe. I'm going to be honest, though, and I don't think I've ever spent that much money in one transaction online before. That was pretty insane. Awesome. That's fantastic. That, that's exciting. So I hope you are excited. Like, you get a bunch of new gear and you get to make a really awesome studio. I mean, you all going to go pro now? Oh, I mean, no. Whoa. We are not professionals. And I am excited. I, I have actually, uh, all jokes aside, I have been uh, designing the studio with Dave now for a couple of weeks more intimately um, yeah. as far as like what we're doing. Good. And it's 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 going to turn out pretty cool, I think. I think people are going to like it. It's going to be a big part of the uh, ah, it's gonna be a big wow. part of the, the tour when people come through. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Numbat wants to make sure that you found that you saw his two subs and counted I, them toward the total. I did. Apparently, I'm echoing. Are you, oh, oh, I know why. You're not in my ear. Hold on. Guys, I forgot to put the disembodied voice in my ear. Thanks for reminding us. One second. I am attempting to loose my headphone. Apparently, it is uh, permanently married to my laptop. There we go. All right. Yes. It's Justin's in a tunnel. <laughs> well, hey, then it's very, very fitting that Justin just said we weren't professional, guys. See? We've demonstrated it. We have visual aids. <laughs> Yeah, we're, it's all, almost like we're building oh, a there we pop go. Justin's studio. in my ear. That should instantly help, guys. There um, it is. It's almost, it's almost like we're building a prop studio. It's just for looks, guys. We don't know how to use it. Um, <laughs> you need to do a video when you've built it that's titled, like, Not Professionals. And just have, like, Ed and Dave and you, like, wandering around going, What's this? I don't know. We spent $3,000 on it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Done. We'll make it. <laughs> I think it would be awesome. Yeah, well, we were talking about specters and ghost guys, so I thought that if Justin sounded like he came beyond, from beyond the grave, it would be suitable. So, you know. Uh, I am looking for a light gray color to start, or at least a medium gray color, to start with my NMM-num-num-num-nums. Num, 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 num. Cloudy gray will work. I usually start my steel uh, NMM with cloudy gray, even though it's not very light. Um, so I'll have to mix it with white to make it... Uh, happier. Also, if y'all remember, I, I usually mix a little bit of blue with my steel color for NMM. Yeah, we do need a Reaper's, Reaper Not Professional sticker. I absolutely agree. Like, that needs to go on the list. In fact, if you design one and send it to me, I'll print them, Justin. <laughs> I'm always getting offers from Sticker Mule. I could totally take advantage of that. Um, right. Let's see, where is my... So yeah, we need a Not Professional sticker. Then I can mail it to you guys as a present. Um, where is... Where's my ash and blue? Aha! Apparently yelling at my have... ash and blue gets it. How do we have a... How do we not have a, a not professional emote yet? Yeah, how do we not... Grim! Or, or who is... Oh, it's Trasharama yeah, who makes her. Trasharama. Yeah. 
Trash, you need to make us a not professionals emote because we were so not professional today. I think we've talked about it actually in the past now that I think about it. And the problem is it's a lot of words. It's a lot of letters and it's hard to cram that into an emote. Yeah, not pro though. Hashtag not pro. That works. That's short. <laughs> trash goes what? <laughs> Come on, Trash. Not pro. Hashtag Reaper not pro. You could do the, uh, I guess in an emote it doesn't make sense. It does make sense in a sticker though, so. Oh no, this is totally different. Oh. The Reaper MSP. No, no, Master Series is fine. We could be Masters, not Professionals. Oh, I was thinking of Reaper Pro Paint, but I guess... Oh, we don't have that. Pro Paint. See, we discontinued Pro Paint. That's the real reason, everybody. The real reason that Pro Paint was discontinued is because we are hashtag not Professionals. And I thought that I found my Ash and Blue, and then I was fooled by the universe. The universe said... You want to mislead people. You're right. <gasps> there we go. Yay! All right, so um, this little-known color that nobody, like, you know, buys enough of that, that needs to change, by the way, guys, because this is the best color for your NMM steel to give it a little bit of blue to make it look like you're under the sky. And obviously, Juliana is out under the sky since we have given her sun-bleached hair and sunburned skin. Um, so we need to do that. Uh... Yeah, you are not supposed to eat the paint from the bottle. It is not, in fact, food grade. I've talked about this on stream before. Where's my ash and blue? <laughs> that's good, Rad. That's good, Radmore. Oh, yeah, we need a fabric patch saying hashtag not professionals. Yes, with the Reaper logo. It's pro tips, but, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying, like, you know, that I'm, like, actually, I guess I'm a professional crap. I'm sorry, Justin, I can no longer work for Reaper. I cannot figure out how to walk that back. I can't because, you know what, I take money for this. And that means, by definition, I am a professional. So, dang well, it. Do, they, got they, they got me. They got me. I'm definitely not doing this for charity. So. <laughs> so, hashtag not professionals, like, only applies to... We just have to say that we're, yeah, that we're, like, working for Reaper for, uh, for peanuts and uh, minis and paint or something. Yeah, we work for minis and paint. Jetta Rose has, has exposed it. Shh, Jetta, don't tell anybody. We're not professional. Either that or I'm just lying. Maybe the title of the show just lies. I mean, I hate to say that, but, you know, it's possible. I may be an untrustworthy narrator. The paint is a lie. The paint is a lie? The paint is not a lie. The cake may be a lie. <laughs> Rosart has already said the paint is not a cake. Sorry. <laughs> What do we say if we if someone asks for their paint well done? I don't even want to know. So, um, yeah, Ash and Blue. So back to paint stuff. You guys are funny today. I can see that we're going to go off topic a lot. Because hashtag not professionals. Because hashtag not professionals. Also, hashtag more entertaining. Um, I need to straighten up my camera and scooch it a little bit more toward me so that I can more easily paint the mini. Um, and also the palette's just probably not going to be in the frame because uh, it is... Ah! Oh no, it is crooked. There we go, much better. And there we go. So there we are, we're in focus, we're up close, the color is good. You would work for minis? Well, that's the, uh, that is the uh, the whole thing for working for a game store or miniatures company, right? Is that uh, your paycheck's just a coupon for product? <laughs> that's what I always used to say. <laughs> rent? Who needs rent? All right, so we're doing a mixture of three drops of Cloudy Gray 9089, which is what I use for all my base for steel. And then we are adding a drop of a bluish color into it. In this case, my favorite bluish color for doing things like Sky Earth Chrome, which is Ashen Blue. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Just checking, checking. Build a shelter built made of minis. That's Reaper HQ, Brozard. Didn't, didn't you know? <laughs> did any Grim, did anyone mention that the two of you working from home are producing a much better show than in the studio? Well, thank you. Thank you. I don't know if, if Ed and Dave want to hear that, though. Shush. <laughs> but we're going to have a new studio, and then Justin can, can do uh, a, you know, a much better uh, show. Much better than I can with my uh, paltry setup here. That's true. This show right here in its current format uh, basically won't change. Yeah. Yep. We're going to 
stay around, stick around here. I don't think, I mean, I've got, I've already got my high end camera and I've already got my high end lighting. Um, so, um, all in all, I'm very pleased with my studio in here and, uh, the quality that I'm able to get. So, you know, I'm not going to drive back to Texas every day to do the show in the new studio. No, I may come down and check it out though. Once it's, you know, safer to travel. Once I'm not going to be in fear of my life for getting on an airplane. Poor airlines. I feel so bad for them, but I don't see there's any help for it. I wonder how... I, I can't think of any better way they could have dealt with all this either. I mean, really the only solution for the poor airlines is either to take federal money to keep operating and go down to a skeleton crew, you know, and just run necessary flights. I mean, that's pretty much what they're doing, right? So... I, I do feel bad for everybody in that industry, though, because, I mean, I love to travel, and so I don't like to see the airlines in trouble. Although it's kind of cool that they've waived all their flight change fees and stuff because they've been forced to. Uh, is Justin, Justin, are you getting a techie minion? Uh, I would say that's unlikely. That That's too expensive, huh? Um, well, it's, it's less that and more that... I, when we get into the new studio, we are building in the console, like, control area, uh, more chairs so that, you know, in the event that I want to hire somebody, I can. Mm -hmm. um, I have not been given the green light on hiring somebody as the short actor. Yeah. Alpha GG, the, the disembodied voice is Justin, who, who uh, actually runs the show at Reaper, uh, as far as, runs all the shows at Reaper, um, as far as being our videographer and uh, general uh, techie, techie and camera guy. Yeah, I prefer technical director. Technical director. Yeah, I know. You're, Hagar. you're right, Turkey. Yeah, that's and that's we live in a, uh, a college town too, where UNT has a nice film program. Where it would be really easy uh, for us to get an intern or two. Yeah, that would be lovely. Uh, I have given yes, I have given that information to the appropriate parties. Uh, I've still got a little bit of uh, roughness down here from trying to scrape off scrape off little bits that I was uh, touching up. I need I need my NMM to be smooth. So we're going to base cut the whole thing here. And I'm going to get my shadows and highlights mixed up because I'm probably going to want to do a little bit of wet blending on this. So we're going to do the first little thing there. Ah, I have a little bit of roughness there. Oh, Hager, I think we actually have a lawyer, but, uh, um, I mean, I'll keep you in mind. <laughs> Although, I might need a lawyer pretty soon. So. I'm pretty sure that Reaper actually has some very good lawyers. Um, no, that's cool, Hager. Well, I mean... I don't, I don't know, actually. I don't, I don't feel like we've ever really had to use our lawyers to any real hard extent, so I don't know if we know what quality they are just yet. I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm you. you could, I mean, I seem to recall Ed telling me we had good lawyers. Oh, well. I mean, I assume you get to a certain size of a company and you are, you need somebody to ask questions about on stuff, so. Do, do, do. All right, so did I, did I tell you by the way, Miss Ann? You remember that uh, motorcycle uh, incident with um, with when McKay was driving two years ago? Uh, no, I don't. You, with the motor, motorcycle officer? Oh no! Well, I thought I told you, but I could have swore I told you about that. Hmm. It's uh, she. She was making a legal left turn, and he was in. He was going the wrong way on traffic and he didn't have his lights or anything on on his motorcycle and he mm -hmm. slammed into the uh, front driver's side while we were making the left turn oof he he's fine now obviously he had some broken bones and stuff but wow i believe yeah everything was taken care of medical bill wise but he we were just informed literally last week um by allstate that he retained a lawyer huh weird that happened a long yeah. time ago It did. They, they they did tell me the statute of limitations on it is 
is up in November, so I don't. I hope he's not suing Allstate because they're in. You know, I'm not necessarily being sued, but it's it's right. something that becomes fuzzier than it should be, right? Yeah. I think the what's take more care, infuriating. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, take care. I think what's more infuriating to me is that it uh, it's almost 100% his fault. Yeah. Well, but that's those are the people who push it. I hate to say that because I, you know, got backed into in a parking lot at Kroger. Those the people who are at fault are the ones that seem to like talk themselves into the mindset that it wasn't their fault most strongly. Because this woman was like, she got out of the house screaming at me that it was my fault, like out of the car, even though she had just backed into me and then pulled forward again. So it would look like she didn't. And she, she only shut up when I started taking pictures. So sometimes, wow. yeah. So sometimes, uh, and, and she shut up again when I asked her if she'd been drinking. Whoa, that is a chunky raid. Holy Whoa, crap. what do we get? What do we get? Oh, see that I just mentioned you yesterday. I was just wondering about you. We were looking for somebody awesome to raid. Well, welcome and thank you. Hey, everybody. We're painting a little tiny miniature, so you can see by my hands how tiny she is. Um, sculpted by the great sculptor, Bobby Jackson, who is awesome, just like Cnot. And uh, so we're, I'm doing her little scythe right now. I was thinking I would paint some reflections of like surrounding greenery and do some light on it, um, stuff like that. So yeah, that's an amazing raid. Hey, Cnot, it's good to see you. I was just wondering how you were doing. So oh, man, thank you for all the follows. That's great. Yeah, guys. super. Follow, follow, follow. Thank you for following us. Yeah, I do this every morning, guys. So, well, okay, it's morning for us. It's noonish for a lot of the U.S. I'm out in California, but uh, I'm Anne. I used to work for Reaper. I still work for Reaper on a streaming basis. Um, I designed Reaper's Master Series paint line, uh, and I still do essentially painting instruction. So uh, right now we are going to jump in here. I need to grab a shadow color, actually. So let's see. Hmm. Often I use gray liner for this, but since uh, I don't have it right to hand, I'm going to cheat and use pure black. Now, if only I'd been painting a pirate. <laughs> yeah, thank you, c -Not. It's awesome. I don't, know, uh, I don't know if the information had trickled down to you, Anne, but c -Not really enjoys your paint. Oh, really? Awesome. I love hearing that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I spent, you know, obviously I spent 17 years at Reaper and 15 of them were developing that paint line and making every batch by hand. So... Now that I'm out here, I, they've got uh, Sadie took over uh, making the batches and creating new colors. I miss it. I do miss creating new colors. That was the funnest part. Funnest is actually a word. I promise. <laughs> We're not grammatically correct here, guys. Okay, well, most of the time we are. But I'm, I'm, I can make up words from time to time. Especially when I have less caffeine in me. All right. Sweet. Uh, streams, you not. All right. So, Okay. Cool. So yay. Let's see here. Just checking up on chat. I like to actually respond to you guys. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we were just talking about like car incidents. So we'll, we'll get back to painting now. Uh, I'm afraid the stream is a little bit off topic today, guys. Everybody, uh, all the chat was very chatty today. So I'm mixing up a color. I'm going to show you guys my paint consistency because that's important. I need a shadow color uh, because I'm painting this scythe to look like metal, but I'm not using metallic paint. And what we call that is non-metallic metals. Let me see. I'm going to put a little bit more light on this subject. There we go. So key in this is to figure out where your shadows and highlights would fall. And then you need to paint more dramatic shadows and sharper highlights because you're trying to create the illusion that this is metal instead of just flat paint. So just looking at it under my light, I can see, you guys can see too, right? That there's a, a brighter highlight up here because the light is coming from this direction. I should turn her to make sure that the light is going from kind of from where uh, I was envisioning it. So there we go. So now we can see that there's a bright highlight here and along this edge. And we can see that there's a dark shadow on the underside down here. So we want to essentially, um, we want to duplicate that. That's why it's nice to have an overhead light when you're painting. You can kind of check what your actual highlights and shadows should look like in their position uh, and make sure that you get it right. And when you're doing something like creating an illusion of something that's shiny, then it becomes very important because it's, it's getting those highlights and shadows right that enables you to do this. Being um, uh, new, haven't played with an MM. High level explanation, low level explanation. So I think I kind of got it there, Canadian Gecko. Is essentially, we are, uh, you have to, okay. <laughs> Actually, let me break it down really, really, really simply as I do it, okay? So you did understand that using the light source that's natural, my lamp up here, 
I've isolated where my bright highlights and my darker shadows are, right? So we're going to paint what we see. Um, do -do. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Grim. You didn't know I moved? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, wanted to be with my awesome guy. And uh, so I moved out here a couple months back in early April. Yeah, in the midst of the pandemic. Fun, right? Um, but we got here intact and uh, have not gotten sick. So this is all good. Sweet. All right, so I've got some pure white here. You always want to use pure white or something very close to it when you're doing metal, uh, faux metal effects. Anything shiny, really. Because that bright pop of a spot highlight is partially what creates the illusion of the shiny. So I tend to like starting with my highlights. So I'm going to use some pure white just to put in the highest part. And I often will grab a little bit of my gray mixture and kind of wet blend that together. Wet blending is just essentially taking both colors when they're wet and kind of smooshing them together to get an easy blend. Um, all right. Oh, gotta go. Okay, Alpha GG. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, we, yeah, we're painting NMM today, Strange. We're gonna do her scythe here. Because a curved surface um, may look intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. Especially not that one that's pretty clearly sculpted. So there's another highlight here. That's gonna catch the light. You're kind of keeping the areas that are um, perpendicular to the light source kind of gray, um, more that middle gray. And you don't need to worry about blending really great for NMM, especially down in the beginning. What's most important is to try to get your highlights and shadows right so that you can start to create the illusion that this is shiny. So even with those two highlights, we're already starting to look a little shinier, right? So now I'm going to take some pure white and on the very side of my brush, because I can see that this edge here catches the light on the very side of my brush. I'm going to clean most of my paint off of it, as you can see. And I've thinned my paint too. Here, let's see so you can guys see it's not full strength. You see how it falls off the side of the palette there. So it's a little bit, I would say it's about a two to one mixture at this point, paint to water. So I thin my paint pretty excessively. And to get really fine details, it helps. So here we are, and we're going to use the side of the brush only. And that's going to enable us to hit the side of this really in a really fine line. Even if you don't have really good brush control, this trick is good. Because you don't have to really control anything except the angle that your brush is flat up against that edge. And it enables you to, to paint to that edge without having to hit it, you know, by painting it exactly. Um, so that's a, a good tip for people who have trouble with brush control. Which when you're starting out in any painting hobby, brush control is... Uh, is the hard one, right? It takes time to build. It's muscle memory. So, all right, so we've got our nice little highlight there, but now we really need shadows because right now we aren't really conveying the shiny. And uh, what you really need is you need both highlights and shadows because what creates the illusion of shininess, you can even see this in old oil paintings, right? The Dutch masters have some excellent, um, you know, like goblets or armor or, you know, sword pommels. They've, they used to do shiny effects in their paintings all the time, but they're doing the same thing I am. They're using gray and black and white to do so. Um, so this tradition has been around for a long time. Of course, comic book artists have been doing it, you know, okay? They have, they don't use metallic inks in comics. They have to create that illusion of all those shiny armor, um, and superhero costume pieces with color alone. So one of the ways that you create the illusion of shiny is that you usually have a dark shadow right underneath your brightest highlight. Um, and you can even see this if you look at, say, the brush ferrule here, and you see, see that bright spot highlight. And then right under it, see that shadow? Quite dark. And then the the next component, you can, if I move my hand under it, you can see that under the darker shadow, there you can see my hand color, right? And that's an under reflection. That's light bouncing from the environment. So that's the basics of NMM right there. Is You can see also that the top of the ferrule is in general lighter, although as it tips away from your eye, you can see that it gets a darker outline. So when you start painting this sort of technique, look at metallic objects in your environment look for those those quantities look for the brightest highlight look for where the shadow falls in relation to that and then look for reflections and see how they bounce <laughs> yeah rathmore notes 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 right so i'm going to take uh, a little bit of just gray for now and kind of make it under reflection on the very very underside of this and uh if i was using thinner paint i could blend it in a little bit better but right now it's not too important I am going to thin that just a little bit. That one was, this was my base coat. So I was going more uh, four or five to one paint to water. I always thin, even my base coat, because I want a nice level uh, surface. 
sometimes that means I have to put two coats on, but I still want the uh, very smooth surface, so I do it anyway. All right, so maybe I'm going to take a little bit. And I'm not using a pure black here. I'm using pure black mixed with my gray. Um, because uh, straight up pure black tends to be a little bit harsh, or a lot harsh, actually. So if you use it, it can be very hard because steel NMM or silver NMM is really blending from almost pure black to pure white, right? That's You can't imagine a harder blend than pure black to pure white um, if you're not using something like an airbrush. So to help with that, I don't go all the way down to pure black. I go very close. I mix some gray in to make it a little easier on myself to blend. Putting in a little bit of a shadow here. I trying to figure out how this blade is working. I think it's more like, yeah, that may not be right. See, it's kind of weird because it's got like one edge up here, but down here it, it kind of bevels. So we kind of have to work with that and say, well, maybe that's just a sculpting flaw, or maybe I created that problem when I was removing mold lines. I'm going to say that this is all tilted upward down there. So it's going to catch the light. Another thing worth saying is that um, although you can have various reflected highlights and sometimes your highlights are going to creep up, right? So they're like these, this highlights creeping up a little bit at the side here, and there's going to be light reflecting all around, but none of it, none of the reflections are going to be as bright as your immediate light source bounce. That spot highlight, that spot, uh, let's see if I can get it again. Come on, thing underneath here. There we go. That spot. See that spot on the brush, that middle spot. That's very bright. That's the overhead light right above it. Um, nothing else, none of the other highlights are going to be that bright. Um, no, I never do mathophile because it, it creates a cartoony effect and usually I like more realism on my models. So the darker and blacker the lining that you use to bring out your details, the more cartoon your pieces will look. And some people really like that effect and some people don't. I'm one of the people who would rather have um, a more natural shadow in the end, so I tend to use dark browns, dark grays, more like uh, shadows you'd see in the environment. Yeah, and gray liner is 9065. Um, that, that's often what I use for shading here because for two reasons. One, it's a gray. It's not a pure black, so it's not as harsh. And the second thing is that liners are a little bit more translucent. And that means that I can get a more subtle effect um, without having to thin it too much. It goes transparent more readily than pure black does. Pure black has a lot of coverage. All right, so there we go. So now we've got some darks and some lights, and I really feel like I need some darks down here. I feel like I lost a lot because of the shape of the blade. So we're going to come in and get the bottom there. I'm going to get a little closer. Let me see if I can zoom in even more. There we go. All right. Real close. Real close. So you see how huge my finger is, and uh, you will see how close we are. And I may, I also need to draw like kind of a comparison here because if my light is coming from more or less overhead, then I've got a little bit too much highlight here because the light isn't coming this way, right? It's coming this way. And although it may be um, largely diffused and there should be a highlight here, it probably shouldn't be that bright. So all during this process of, of blocking in, which is pretty much what I'm doing is blocking in highlights and shadows, I'm questioning whether I'm uh, placing my highlights and shadows correctly, thinking about where the light is falling in the environment and kind of double checking myself because it's really easy since the model is too tiny to cast its own realistic shadows. It's very easy to get in, get incorrect with that. Uh, and once you, once you kind of have your highlights in the wrong place on one part, it'll look weird because you're, you're like, your eye is like, well, wait a minute. It kind of looks like metal, but it doesn't kind of look like metal. So what's going on here? at which time you have to uh, adjust. Yeah, I use pure black for painting the edges of bases. Or if I'm painting something that's black, um, I may use pure black, but I, I often will mix another color in, which is something to remind people about is, uh, is that this is, remember my beginning gray here is not actually a pure gray. I added a little bit of blue into it. So for the colors we are using, we are cloudy gray is our starting color mixed with just uh, a little bit of ashen blue, which is a great sky color for when you're trying to do this sort of thing. So I like to, I like to make the gray, not just a flat gray because steel and silver, especially 
are going to reflect all the colors around that. And that includes sky color. So that's why I, always, I almost always reach for a blue. So I'm redoing this highlight and I'm making it darker. I'm not making it pure white down here. Um, and I'm also kind of looking at, do I have this edge highlight in the right place? Because it looks like it kind of splits. So let me see here. It's very, very obvious that, that it is there. Yeah. I guess that the, the shape of the scythe changes as it gets toward the handle. And that does make sense, right? It would need to get flatter down here in order to um, attach to the handle, right? So I guess it's just a natural shaping of the item. So let's go back to the top. We want the top to be generally lighter because it is actually hitting, you know, it's, it's reflecting the light. But I also want to add some blue in here. Because up on top is also where you're going to get a blue effect from the sky. And if we're making a very shiny uh, scythe, then I want to definitely uh, put that in. So let me move my paint out of the out of the way again, since we see color a lot better, I think, if we uh, don't have it in there. The palette, white palette, tends to shift my camera. It's my only complaint about this camera, and really almost any camera these days suffers from it, is that your background color will sometimes cause um, the, the way the camera is interpreting color to shift. So... Let's grab some of this ash and blue. You can see there it is. I'm going to plop some water into it. I probably have about three or four drops there and I'm going to thin it right down by adding two drops. So it's between, um, that's around probably a two to one right now. I want it thin enough that it's going to blend in nicely with the gray, but it's also very close to the gray in color. So I don't have to thin it as much to get it to look blended. And that's just generally something to remember if you're trying to blend colors on an area and you're doing the uh, wet onto dry, which is what we're doing here, which is what I call layering. So in other words, your base color is dry and you're putting wet paint down on top and trying to create a blend. The more different your colors are, the more you have to thin that paint to make it blend. So I'm going to paint the blue toward the top. I'm going to blend it in with the white. I'm probably going to pick up a little bit of white and mix it in with my blue on the palette and uh, create a little bit more of a bluish bluish hue up there. It might be a little better. Sometimes I move the palette underneath if I'm working on really light colors because it lets you see them more. So you can kind of see the blue up there. It's a little more evident in person. I could also go with a stronger blue, but that's pretty good. I kind of like that. I'm gonna pop that down there too. Um, and down here, actually, I'm gonna grab a different color. I want her to be out in the uh, environment. Obviously she's picking leaves and stuff. So I'm thinking I'm going to grab a dark olivey green troll hide, um, which is not just for trolls. And I'm going to try to put some of that into here because this surface is going to be reflecting what's out here around her, right? So if she's in a forest, there's going to be dark green all around her. So I like troll hide, even though it's a bit olivey, a bit more jungly than foresty, but I think glazed onto there, it's going to be just fine. And I didn't shake it enough. Whenever you squeeze out your paint and you get this, that means you didn't shake your paint enough. Because uh, the resins and pigments and everything that go into paint are heavier than the water that the binder is. And so essentially what you're seeing there is the clear stuff is the binder, um, which is a water-based goo, for lack of a better term. Oh, no problem, Vidarion. Look at that. And they uh, they said they really like Jess Sparks, the one that, the, you know, the watercolor lady? Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, oh, Achilles fantastic. Blade. I, feel like I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Hey. Uh, or at least not in chat. And uh, Gurgi, to answer your question, yes, it is Friday. Yes. Oh, speaking <laughs> of, oh. my email in? Oh, yeah, I got the email from Courtney. Yes, so now we now I just have to pick some paints. Sweet. Perfect. Yeah, so we're going to do a giveaway on Friday, and we're going to do an AMA. So everybody can just throw questions at my head, and I will actually not be painting something else, and I will be able to stop and answer them and sometimes demo. Um, yes, and actually, real quick while we're on the topic. Okay. Um, all the new people that are here while you're setting up and getting ready. Yep, here. getting my green mixed um, up. Getting your green mixed up. Um, for all the new people here, we we do have uh, – this is Ann's Daily Show. We do this at 1130 Central every day. Mm-hmm. Um, we do, let's see, what is today? Today's Tuesday. We do Crow's Nest on Tuesdays, which is 3 p.m. in the afternoon, which is our other time slot. We often have shows. Um, Thursdays, we do giveaways uh, on Painting Platinum at 3 and then Reaper Live at 6. We do giveaways. And then this Friday is a special day 
because we earned enough subs, uh, or our community earned enough, or gave us enough subs to earn an AMA with a big giveaway. Right yeah. Now? Yes. Yes. So essentially, what on our Discord, our Reaper Miniatures Discord, which you can you know join if you're watching, um, we have an AN AMA channel. And so you can put your questions about painting or modeling or, or anything, my dog, me, <laughs> whatever, uh, my reading glasses, uh, anything you want into there. And I just pretty much start at the top and, and start answering them uh, for the AMA. And I demo where necessary. Sometimes if a question is especially interesting or involved, I'll make it into a show. Like we'll do an, a whole episode on it. Um, so yeah. So yeah, show up on, on uh, and we're going to give away stuff. Like we're going to give away some mini and paint packages. So yeah, Friday at 1130 Central. Yes, this show always starts at 11, well, I say always, it, within 5 or 10 minutes, 11.30 Central every yeah. single day. Yeah, often but it's 11.35 Central, but we try to, <laughs> I've been trying to make everything live at least on time. Um, I will make an effort, yes, yes. All right, so uh, do I have any experience with things like Vallejo water texture? If it's, a, I use for water texture, I use the Woodland Scenic stuff, um, but uh, so I don't, I haven't used their actual product. I'm certain it's, it's, you know it's decent. I mean, Vallejo's stuff tends to be decent, um, but I don't, I haven't actually used their product. Uh, all right. Super. Yeah, that's right. Friday is double giveaway because Gurgi, um, Justin. Oh yes. Yes, indeedy. So, cause we have a, we have a, um, person who watches us, uh, who is giving away stuff for his birthday also. So, so double giveaway Oops. Friday. All right. So see how much we thinned this paint, everybody. It's like a one-to-one. Now, it's a sign, uh, in my opinion, it's a sign of a good paint when you can thin the paint this much, but it doesn't fall out of solution. Like, you still see that it's, like, holding its color. Um, some paints are very heavy body, <coughs> and when you thin them a lot, you'll notice the pigment floating to the top and the stuff sinking, and you have to mix it up again and again. That'll happen here and there with some colors, because some pigments are just more prone to that. But uh, it's nice to get it like this, because then you can do your, your glazing of forest colors onto your green um, and thin the paint so much, but not have it uh, need to be mixed up every time you dip your brush into it. That so. wasn't that wasn't me, Margaret. That was uh, David. Tell David bless you. <laughs> oh, did did, did David will. sneeze? Sorry, my boyfriend is in the uh, in the room with me because he's working for his company, um, and sometimes he will heckle. He is also a world class miniature painter, David Diamondstone. His website is lightminiatures.com if you want to go look. Um, all right, so I'm putting some greens into the gray here. And if I want to make them a little more evident because they're so dark, I might mix a little bit of white into there and make a little bit of a greenish highlight as it comes down toward the bottom. And adding a little bit of white can, can help bring out, you can see that green a lot better now, right? So it can help bring out that color. Just make sure that you're adding your highlight color there in line with uh, where your highlights should be. So, but the other thing we can do is also put an under reflection on, right? So like the brush, remember, and then I put my hand under it, you can see that color. So on anything shiny, you're going to get that. So up here at the top, we can choose between a green and a brown. And we could do even both if we wanted. But since we have our green out, I'm going to use the green. And one thing I need to remember then when I'm painting her basing down here, and maybe I'll put a little bit on there just to remind myself, but the basing will need to incorporate these colors. Because uh, if I'm getting a reflection up here on the top, on the underside of the side, then that reflection needs to be the color of the basing. So if I had changed my mind down here and if I had gone brown with this turf area, I would need to change what I did up here as well to make it look right. Um, but for now, I'm just going to put that olivey color down there. It's a it's more, little more than a wash at this point, but it'll remind me that I need to do that, that I need to at least, I can go brown with this, but I need to have parts of it be the correct green for it to look right. Hey there, Reaper John. Yeah, you missed the hugest raid ever from Sinop because he's awesome. All right, so let's mix uh, mix up that green and white highlight a little bit and do an under reflection up at the top here underneath uh, the scythe. You can see that I've left it at kind of a medium gray. I'm going to use the side of my brush again to kind of like get that edge. It got a little bit out of control there. So I can grab some water right away if I'm fast and kind of blend that in. And I thinned it a little bit too much, so I'll have to come back in, but I did want it to actually blend in nicely. The better your blending is, the better you can make your NMM look if you're doing a very smooth surface, a very polished surface. But as I mentioned earlier, it's more important to get your highlights and shadows right. So when you're starting out with NMM, don't worry about the blending. 
try to get your highlights and shadows nailed. If you nail those, it may look like rough metal instead of smooth metal at first until you get your blending better, but it will look like metal. Uh, oh, I think David was the one sneezing, yes. All right, then. And I am having a little bit of trouble getting my paint, probably because I have too much paint on my brush. So notice how I got some blobs here, guys. So what that means is, is not that my paint is too thin, but that I've got too much on my brush, even though it doesn't look like I have much at all. So I need to dab more off on my palette. And then when I come back, I'm gonna be able to do a much finer, non-puddly um, look, right? I'm gonna have a lot more control. That was purely my brush stroke issue. Uh, so that's another hint when you're starting to work with thinner paint is if you see those blobs, if you, if you draw uneven lines or you get a lot of watery blobs, it really is probably that you are, um, you've probably thinned your paint adequately. You just need less of it on your brush. Now I'm going to grab my original gray mixture, kind of bring that in. I don't want to lose this shadow. This is where it gets persnickety, right? Because you don't want to lose that shadow that's giving you contrast. So you also, this is more how it helps to have all your colors kind of open in your palette at the same time. So you can go back and correct and adjust, do some little spot blends if necessary, because I don't want to lose that thin dark line. Let's see, oh, hi Dragon Eye. Do, do, do. Yes, better late than never. We, uh, we're doing good today. We're doing some NMM, non-metallic metal technique. I'm grabbing some gray and I'm trying to uh, keep my shadows because I got to keep strategic shadows. I also need to bring up this a little bit more because right now I'm not getting enough contrast on it. That's the hard part. When you're doing this technique on very small models, it can be really tough because you have a, such a small surface, a small area to go from that almost black to this almost white because you do want that light highlight on the underside to go quite light. I'm just kind of dabbing it under there. See, I've got a, I've gotten out of control again. Thank you, John, for highlighting it. But yes, I oh, thank you. Yeah, speaking about paints, stuff. really bubbly paint after a hard shake. More bubbles squirting than actual paint flows. Weird. Um, I almost would think that if the paint was older, I would say that it was broken. Like you may have gotten it way out of solution. You might actually need to stick a toothpick in there and stir it around. Um, because usually you wouldn't get anything bubbly like that after a really hard shake, unless the resins really just were not going to go in solution. Like what that says to me is that your binder is all that is in the top of the bottle. And so extreme shaking is essentially going to cause foam. And the reason for that is the stuff that binds together pigments and resins and the water base, that's called surfactants, those chemicals. And surfactants will essentially, they're soap. It's actually, surfactants are the same thing that make bubbles in dish soap. So when you're shaking so hard, what you're getting is the water and the surfactants and they're foaming. But if you're not getting any paint into there, your paint is probably sitting in a plug at the bottom. If it's not too late, you can grab a toothpick or something like that and start to, you know, kind of stir it in. Um, but if you stick your toothpick down there and it's really rubbery and it doesn't want to mix, your paint is dead. And that can happen not only to old paint, but also to paint that is frozen at any point in its lifespan. Do do. Let me make sure I've got it. Yeah, Vallejo paints. Yes, and and that is that, especially their oranges and yellows. It's because of the base they use. Um, they use a very heavy bodied base that's kind of like a synthetic vinyl. And so it's very heavy and that means it falls out of solution faster than some of the finer bodied paints. That heavy base is, is what, or that, that, you know, that heavy resin is what gives it good coverage, but it also is a, is a liability because if it sits for a long time, everything will settle out. And the longer it settles out, the more and more the water gets squeezed out between those particles and the water goes up into the top of the bottle. And as it settles out, if it ever loses all that water, it just becomes a, a plug of solid resins. And that's when your paint dies. So Master Series is, is a more medium body paint, which means it's not as, it doesn't have as great coverage out of the bottle, but it doesn't do that as badly. Like I don't, I've have paints, uh, there's paints at Reaper in my old workshop that I have from first batch of Master Series 15 years ago, and they're still good. So your mileage may vary. Do shake your paints regularly is what I advise. 
Um, if you pay, shake your Master Series like once every couple of years, you should be fine. Uh, I don't know about Vallejo. I'm not sure where the sweet spot is on that. Alrighty. Stinky paint, red liner. Um, I would, it may be off. Like paint can rot. If something gets into it, Carly Hunter, um, the paint, paint can go bad. I might, depending on how long you've had it, if you got it new, then I might send it back for a replacement. Um, but uh, if it's older, then it may just have gone off. Uh, let's see here. Anti-shine additive. Yes, you can. Be sure to to um, to both shake and thin your layer of sealer, Margaret. Uh, like, shake up your sealer really well. And if you thin it, it should go more matte. If you thin it just a little, like six drops sealer to one drop water. Um, that it should go a little more matte. But yes, if you want it to be closer to a dead matte, use a very, and I mean a tiny little amount of brush on sealer, uh, or sorry, of anti-shine additive. Now, if you, if you're a patron of mine, which I think you are, um, I'm on Patreon, guys. Patreon.com slash painting big is my Patreon. Uh, I have a PDF about Reaper additives. It's from early last year. So if you look for that, it will, it will talk at length about anti-shine additive and how little you want to use. And I think I even show, I even might have a video there that shows you how little to use. So do be cautious with it. Use only a little at a time, mix it in and test it. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Where am I? Oh, looking down. Um, I think that if you left a paint sitting for longer than five or six years, Brizard, you'd start to see some serious fallout depending on the brand. Uh, Master Series might be able to be resuscitated a little bit easier, but if you just left it sitting in a box for six years, I, uh, 10 years, you're definitely getting to danger zone. But in general, dropper bottles keep paint from evaporating, but they won't keep it from settling out if it's not moving. All right. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, contact Reaper about the red liner if it's really off, guys, because the liner base can be titchy that way, and they should probably check the batch then. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, six months isn't isn't bad at all, no man's If you if you shake your paint every couple of years, I always say the Reaper paint will stay good. I mean, at this point, we're we're heading for two decades. <laughs> if you uh, shake your Reaper paint, it may thicken because evaporation still happens out of the bottle, but it it won't die. It won't plug, as I call it. Um, oh yeah, thin it just a little bit, Margaret. It it may not be quite as plasticky if you thin it, but it'll still seal pretty well. And uh, I th I always thin it. Oh, uh, Kickstarter. That'll be a couple of years then. Yeah, so that's not a current batch. Maybe the current batch is a bit better Curly Hamster. Let's see here. Uh... Yeah, that's good to know, Gridlock. Thanks that you have original batch MSPs that have gone back into solution. That's fantastic. That's 15 years. I love hearing our shelf life being good. <laughs> Even though I'm not the one making the paint anymore. It's still my baby because I created it, so... Ah, let's see here. I just, I'm trying to catch up with comments, but I need to paint more. Um, do, do, do. Four months, you're fine. Ah, uh, let's see here. Sinat is still with us. Hey, Sinat. I'm glad you're still with us. Uh, even though I'm babbling currently about paint chemistry. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki Coles. Thank you for the sub. We are, we are aiming for a large sub goal right now for a hundred subs before our all right, we're doing an AMA this Friday, but we're working already on our next AMA, and I want to give away something bigger. So to do that, we have to have more subs. So thank you so much, everybody who has subbed this show. All right, you broke the bot. <laughs> no. Uh, don't I worry that I accidentally will splash some paint on that beautiful dress? Um, not really, M. M. Uh, M. Noel, because I'm. If you notice how little paint I get on my brush, so like when I load up my brush, I'm loading that much paint. As long as I'm paying attention, nothing's going to drip or splash. And usually I'm even cleaning a bunch of that paint off of it. So I even have less paint on my brush. You can see it there against the, the black of my, uh, yeah, is, this is an artifact, old film canister. Remember when those were around, Justin, as a photography person? Um, uh, yes. In fact, I remember my grandmother used to keep them in the, because um, I never used that many of them. Uh -huh. She used to keep them in the freezer. Oh, wow. So essentially what this lets me do is thinning my paint and using a really good brush and uh, keeping very little paint on my brush. As you can see what good control I've got, right? I'm never going to drip or dab. I can draw tiny little lines and hit tiny little details and not have to worry about the paint going anywhere besides where I want. So that's why I don't worry. 
And you know what? The other thing to remember is if you painted it once, you can paint it again. If I accidentally streaked some gray paint or something over this, I could touch it up. It's not the end of the world. Mistakes are never the end of the world. Like just relax, enjoy your art. You can fix anything you do. All right, gonna catch up. I swear I'm gonna catch up. Oh, thanks for the Patreon plug, John. I was gonna ask somebody to link to it. Uh, do, do, do. Right now I have a smooth skin tones tutorial up for only two bucks on that Patreon, guys. So it is a good bargain right now. As well as you get all the rest of the $2 content, which is, you know, almost two years now. Um, so yeah. I don't know how much of a bigger thing I'm going to be able to do, Margaret, but I want to give away a big, see, yeah, something like a big dragon or a big set would be neat. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, as long as, uh, as long as they happened after we hit the first goal, we, we count them, Greggy. So yes, your extra subs definitely count. All right. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. I really like film canisters for, for painting platforms, um, for holders because, uh, you can fill them with like pennies. I think this one is filled with pennies or a piece of an old miniature that I had that I hated. <laughs> Bad minis go in the pit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really, they're comfortable. What, what's important guys is when you get something here, let me zoom out a bit. Zoomies, reverse zoomies. Um, when you're choosing a miniature holder, just choose something that is comfortable for you to hold. Everybody's hands are different. Everybody's, some people have shorter fingers. Some people have longer. Some people have bigger hands or smaller. So pick something like I've got a big, canister here from my dog, uh, my dog's meds. That's, that's big. This is still pretty comfortable for me to hold, but usually I prefer something smaller like this. Something that isn't going to cramp your hand that you can hold comfortably for a long time. So that's actually more important than you'd think. All right, let's get back to this. The pit of despair, I guess. Uh, wine cork, I mean, wine cork works, but better if you can, uh, actually the, some of the miniature holders that I have like this one from, I don't remember, PK Products or Picaro? I don't remember. But this one actually has a cork that hold it holds. So cork can be, I mean, cork is nice because you can, you know, if you've pinned your model, you can just jam the pins into it. Yeah, I mean, if you get like old like craft paint bottles, those can be a good uh, a good thing too. Yeah. Oh, washers. Yeah. Washers. Anything. You have film canister oubliette. I love it. That's absolutely it. Zero. All right. So let's see here. What am I doing? <laughs> what was I doing before I got totally distracted by you guys? You do that so well. So actually on camera, you can see now you can see that I've got some nice green light coming in here. I've got some nice blue light up above. I have a little bit of a hint of green on the underside, but I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, does it look convincing yet? No, it really doesn't. It needs a little bit more. It means more of an under reflection opposite its light. Um, I'm definitely not getting that shiny. I'm getting that shiny on the top, but, uh, oh, settle down Kiri. Sorry guys. I have an elderly dog for those who don't know. And when she has to go, she has to go. And that means we take a break. She's standing up right now. I'm trying to see if she's in that mode. What's up, Kiri? Oh, she looks like maybe. Well, she looks stiff. She looks like she wants to come over and say hi to me. Oh, okay. She's just saying hi to David. She's like, oh, there's a David in the room. But yeah, if she starts uh, kind of giving me the look, then I'm going to have to run briefly and take her out. Um, I will be back in like five minutes if that happens. Uh, I mean, feel free, Gridlock. I mean, I've got I've got a lot of people. Uh... Reaper does not sell mini holders. Are you going to settle down, pretty girl? Good dog. I would show you all my dog, um, but she is like in kind of in the shadow of the room here and now she's settling down. There we go. Settle down. Good girl. She's my old girl. She's a, uh, I could show you pictures. Pictures of dog. Pictures of dog. Yes. Pictures of dog. Where's picture of dog? Boop. Very briefly. Just so you know, when I mentioned Kiri, you will all see where she, what she is. Do, do, do. I always know because she's still at the very start of my camera roll. So it's, I can always find Kiri pictures if I go back to the start of my camera roll. Kiri. She says, hi, everybody. That's very much younger Kiri. But, uh, but yeah, so that's my doggle. And uh, sometimes she interrupts the stream. So let's talk about... Let's do a little bit more spot highlight here. I feel like I kind of lost it and I don't really have that nice hot, hot light here. So sometimes adding just a sharp spike of light in a couple places can help convey what you're doing. And then let's see here. I'm just looking at you guys and making sure that I'm not losing anything. Yeah. Yes. My puppy is very cute. 
She is 12 and a half years old. And she's a shepherd. So she's, uh, there we go. Get a little bit more of a highlight. So I've got a double highlight going on here. And the reason is that this upper edge is going to catch the light, guys, as well as that edge out here. And what you're getting there is on the top, you definitely are reflecting light because obviously, you know, you're directly opposite the sun and where it would be coming down, right? But then the, the phenomenon that makes this edge light up like it does is that here is where the edge curls down and the light, think of a mirror, right? The light is falling there and it's bouncing back towards your eyes. So that's why you get that highlight on the middle of the surface, right? Like, look, this, the highlight here is on the middle of the ferrule. Why is it on the middle? Because the light is falling directly down there and bouncing back towards your eyes from there. You can also see that the top of the metal part has a thin highlight, see? So that's what we're duplicating. Oh, thanks for the sub, Dragon Eye. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah, sticky tag is what I'm using to stick the mini down. Sorry if somebody asked about that and I, uh, I missed it. Yeah, you can do hot glue. Um, I, I, it makes me nervous, Sethany, just because sometimes hot glue does not want to come off very easily. And I, I, my minis are fragile enough that I get a little bit leery of that. So I like sticky tack. Um, I use a mix, obviously you can see the orange stuff is like think Elmer's and it's super sticky. And so you cut it with a little bit of the other blue tack and it, uh, it's about right. So let's get some of this highlighting going on here. And I want to make this upper area just a little bit lighter in general. So I'm using much thinner paint now to try to create a smooth one. See, now, now we're getting there, right? See it? Now we're starting to see maybe we're looking a little bit more like metal. And this is just the tuning process. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to damp down the highlight there on the edge a little bit because it is perpendicular to the light. It wouldn't necessarily pop out like that. Um, and you're just kind of troubleshooting. You're like, where is my light coming from? Why doesn't this look right? Okay, let's try brightening this. Let's give it a hotter highlight. Let's uh, see what we can do about reflection. What we got? Oh yeah, pill bottles with reversible lids. The other one is the dice boxes, the square dice cases. Those make great miniature holders for the same reason you can reverse it. Although they are square, so they're not necessarily as, easy, as uh, nice to hold. Yeah, if you paint plastic right now, yeah, some of my metal stuff or resin stuff, I wouldn't want to have to do the hot glue wrench off. Uh, yeah, that's good. Sweet. You know this little group never takes a little snippet of information out of the hole and runs with it to some odd end. Yeah. Zeke, that's like... Randomization is part of the Reaper uh, Twitch stream for sure. All right, I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab some gray. I'm going to grab a tiny touch of green. I'm going to kind of mix them together and I'm going to add some white. I want to make a more convincing under reflection on the underside of this. So I'm going to need it to be lighter, but I want some green in it still because I still want it to reflect a bit of the environment. I'm going to make it a little bit more, but I want it to blend in. And that's why I mixed gray into it as well. So when you're trying to like get a blend from one color to another, mixing in a little bit of your first color um, helps that happen. So I could go greener with my, when I come back at it, if I want to. There we go. Um, but uh, for now, I mostly want to get this highlight right. So let's go and do that. Yeah, the top of that is starting to really read well, but the bottom is not. And so I think I need a little bit more highlight down here. Oh, sorry, off camera. So that's coming up. See it? There we go. Better if I take my finger away. So now I'm getting at more of a highlight down there, but I still need a little bit more bounce light right underneath, I think. A little bit of a higher highlight. The problem with being zoomed in like this is that it's harder to stay on camera because I've, I've got like this tiny square that I can keep my miniature in in order for you guys to see it. So apologies for going off camera there. I'm going to bring in an even brighter highlight down here. Still not as bright as the top highlight, but I want a little bit of variance. And I want it to kind of be opposite my highlight on the top. That's starting to look a bit better. I still think I've got too much over here. It's hard sometimes. On, like some, In some ways, curved like cylindrical surfaces can be very easy, but a curved crescent surface like this can be more difficult. 
So let's do also a little bit on the side because we've neglected the side over here. There should be kind of a secondary reflection there. Not as bright as the top. Alrighty, it's looking a little better. I want to get this a little bit better. I want to get that shadow down a little bit more. Just touching it up, just trying to get it to look right. That's a little bit, I've lost shadow though, and I really hate. Now, given most of this should be light, it should be getting a uh, fairly strong, but there should be a little bit of shadow. Sometimes you go back and forth a lot trying to figure out what is a good amount of shadow. Nope, no reference. This is straight cold. Just using knowledge of how light falls during an eye. Um, in reality, using a reference for this sort of thing wouldn't necessarily be very useful because uh, I'd have to find a scythe that was this shape held in this position with a light source above it. Um, and chances are it would be probably pretty complicated. Um, sometimes with NMM, it's better. You, you need to simplify, right? You're working on a tiny model. You're not working on something that's big. So you kind of got to keep that in mind that some reference photos may be very complex. Now I do have some NMM reference photos that are very good um, that I uh, took at the Renaissance Fair. So once Renaissance Fairs are a thing again, um, go out to one and take some pictures of like swords and maces and armor under a sunny sky with lots of green trees around. It's really useful and it can teach you this sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's harder to find sickles though. Like if you really wanted to, probably the best thing is if you if you found one. Like if you have if you had a metal version of this model, or you have a metal model that um, has a a hand scythe or sickle like this, you could polish up the metal before you prime it. Take it outside and look at it, or put it under a bright light and look at it, and that would tell you kind of give you a good reference photo. Take a picture of it at that point. I've lost some of my dark up here, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit more. But it's starting to look actually pretty good. Still a little bit. Uh... Yeah, well, and that's casting, right? Like you're going to, this isn't a realistic scythe. It's not, you know, it is thicker than it would be in person. Normally they'd be quite thin. Um, and the reason is that you're trying to cast something like this in plastic or metal. Yeah, darken that shadow a bit. And that's going to have an effect on how it looks. So... When you try to cast something like really thin little swords, you can get, one, they bend so easily and they break so easily. Um, and sometimes they won't fill in the casting process. So there are definitely, in miniatures, you definitely bow to um, practicality, I'm afraid, over realism um, on many counts. So let me see here. I want to bring that shadow up into this highlight make it more uh, blended in like that. It's also a bit dark. Yeah, I know. Well, at least you have Renfair friends that you can ask to pose, Dragon Eye. Yeah, I I grew up in a town that had a Renfair because I grew up in Bristol, Wisconsin. Um, so all my friends were working at the fair. And I've been going to Renaissance fairs from a very young age. I really enjoy them. Uh, but they are an excellent place for photo references for medieval stuff. So picking up the highlight a little bit more there, a little bit more there. I think I want to bring this up a little bit. I want to get it. There we go. We're starting to get there. We've almost got it. This probably wouldn't be that bright, so I need to take it down. So it's all troubleshooting, right? You're, you're really, especially with a complicated surface, you're kind of just troubleshooting. You start by blocking in basic highlights and shadows, and then you have to kind of ask yourself at every point, is, is there going to be a shadow there? Is there going to be, you know, this looks actually, this is looking pretty okay. I'm, I'm liking this. I want more blue up here though. Oh, that's your fair. You got married at Bristol Renaissance Fair. Awesome. Yeah, I love the falconer at Bristol. Mm -hmm. Although he's probably retired at this point. He was always excellent though. I always went to that show. Hawks and falcons are fantastic. 
I used to every once in a while see a peregrine when I lived in Texas, and that always made my day. They're such beautiful birds. Alrighty. Mixing some blue, mixing some of this ashen blue with my white because I want it to blend in up here. Now, technically, I could get more complicated with my color reflection here because her hair should also kind of be reflected in this metal, right? So we could go there. Falconer is still there. Wow. That man, he's like a dynamo. Like he's, I don't even want to know how old he must be, but I love his conviction and the fact that he keeps doing this to help the birds. So good for him. All right. I'm going to use a little bit of my chestnut gold, which is a color that I used to get the sun streaked effect on her hair here. That's something I might like to do just as a hobby sometime is work with animal wildlife conservation and stuff. That could be fun. It could be a good way to donate time to a cause you love, right? Hmm. David sitting over there boring, like yawning, trying to make me yawn on camera. Subconsciously. Oh, you need a raccoon folk so that I can do an animal? I did have somebody ask me to do more animal stuff, like a, a realistic fuzzy animal. So I'm just glazing a little bit of that brown into the metal here. I don't want a lot. I just want a little. The problem with doing this is that sometimes it'll look like you just messed up, <laughs> right? You, like you messed up and accidentally painted some brown onto your, uh, your blade. So be very strategic with how you use it and only put it right up against that area. And then I'm going to take some white and emphasize that edge a little bit with a paler color to make it obvious that it was purposeful or hopefully but there so you've got a little bit of the hair now reflected in the metal these are all really subtle effects and you're not going to see them far off but you will probably see them in a photo and you're probably going to see them like if you took this model to a competition to like ReaperCon once ReaperCon's back up and running uh, and you entered it the judges are probably going to notice little things like that so it never hurts to do some little easter eggs in your painting Rax, you're just playing for early raccoons. Just stop. <laughs> you will get your raccoons when John is good and ready. When Reaper is good and ready. Same thing, really. Alrighty. I'm thinking I want a little bit more green here. I'm looking now. I'm going to look at this. This is actually looking pretty good. I think I need more light on the top. More white in troubleshooting because this looks pretty shiny but I think I think it should be lighter up here I think there should be more light more light so we're gonna put in some more light and we're gonna see if we like it yeah yeah now that's looking see that's looking a lot more like metal now I like it I like it a lot all right more 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 highlights more all righty and I kind of, um, you'll notice I'm kind of stippling a highlight here on the edge now to kind of suggest that light's, light's falling down and bouncing, maybe from various sun rays through clouds. It doesn't matter. It varies the surface up a little bit um, and makes it more interesting. <laughs> Raccoons of Reaper Unite. Off to the job. Well, sister, have a good day. Yeah, catch up on the VOD. We're not, we're not going to go that much longer. I've got about another 10 minutes. Just passed a thousand on Bones Five. Oh, thanks for signing up on my Patreon, Grim. I hope you enjoy it. There's some good stuff in Bones Five, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm doing more skin tones this month. I've got a Bones uh, PDF um, on the Dungeon Dwellers coming up on the Patreon, and then uh, I'm just gonna put a couple more spot highlights down there. That might be a little much. Um, Hello, Miniatures Den. Hey, wow, another raid, another big raid. Sweet. Welcome, everybody, from Miniatures Den. I am Anne. I work for Reefer and made uh, our entire Master Series paint line. And now I am out in California being a uh, streamer for Reefer and uh, doing a freelance painting. Um, How are you doing, Luca? Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fantastic. So what we're doing today, you can see I'm working on Juliana Herbalist, who is a cute little model that came out with Bones 4. If you have the uh, Dreadmere expansion, you've got her, sculpted by Bobby Jackson. 
Reaper Bones Black model. I've been, over the last couple days, doing stripy dress on her. We did some uh, brown hair with sunstreaked pattern in it, which I think, actually, I'm really happy with. It turned out really well. Um, and then, just today, I decided I was going to do non-metallic metal on her scythe here. So, let's see, just making sure that I'm getting everything. <laughs> we could have broke a thousand viewers earlier, if this rate had been just a little earlier. I'm, I'm happy anyway. I'm glad to meet you all. So... What we're doing here is uh, a technique called non-metallic metal, which some of you may know of already. It means that you're painting a metallic effect. You're trying to make a surface look shiny and reflective using just like gray, black, white, you know, browns, greens, blues, and not using metallic paint. Um, the reason to do this, I guess nobody's really asked that question, but if I want like a tighter, if it's a smaller surface and I want a really tight effect or I want to suggest colors in the metal, I just, like I did here with her hair, and her hair is reflecting a little bit. Um, I like to do that with NMM. It also photos very well, so if you're doing models for companies that are going to use them for box art or on their website, NMM is generally easier to photograph. Metals, uh, metallic paint can be harder. So, oh, thanks, Coops. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing today, and I was using, my colors were... Cloudy Gray is uh, a Reaper MSP Gray that uh, is it's actually a, a medium dark gray. I like to start with it because I find that it's harder to blend down to black and make it smooth sometimes than blending up to white for me. So I, I start with a rather a darker gray and work up. I mixed a little bit of sky color into that. I'm using Ashen Blue for that. And then our uh, our vegetation color is a dark olivey color. And that's actually from Dungeon Dwellers. And that's troll hide. So it's not just for trolls anymore. Um, it's also just a great vegetation and jungly vegetation color. I just wanted a nice rich green and I had it sitting right in front of me. So I grabbed it. Um, and then we were also using a little bit of pure black and white. And I didn't actually use the pure black in its pure form. I actually mixed it with a little bit of my base gray. Uh, which is usually dark enough to give you the, the dramatic contrast you need. Um, and then the pure white is used for highlights. Um, it's really important to use pure white highlights when you're trying to suggest that something is shiny that isn't actually painted with shiny paint. Um, so you can see that I'm using that to create spot highlights up here. I've also put a little bit more blue up here on the top of the blade to suggest sky reflection. And I was just about, I did the hair reflection there, I was just about to add a little bit more green to the inside edge here because she's probably surrounded by, you know, this sort of color in her environment. So I want to bring a little bit more into there. I feel like I lost a bit of my green. Um, Melon, thank you. Thank you for the sub. Awesome. We are look, working on a big sub goal this month so that I can do a big AMA and giveaway. And we're actually doing a smaller AMA and giveaway this Friday. So uh, 1130 Central Time, tune in and uh, pepper me with questions on painting and I'll do some demos and I'll talk a lot. Um, and we can go through as many questions as we can. Uh, if you're on the Reaper Discord, there's an Anne AMA channel. Pop your question in there. I'll just go down uh, that list, and then we'll take questions from the chat if we have any time left. And usually my stream goes about an hour and a half, guys. I do it every day, but the AMA is a special thing that we save up for. Alrighty. I think nobody else has any other questions right now, so let's get this green in there, and then Justin can look for a raid for us while I'm doing this green. And I'm just going to take a little bit. I've thinned it way down here just to give you an idea how thin my paint goes. You see it's already thin. I'm actually going to drop more water into it. And then I'll show you on the palette. And I like using the well palette instead of a wet palette because I can control my paint consistency better. For me, it just works a little better. So it's really just colored water. I just want a little bit of that suggestion of that vibrant color to go over the... Oh yeah, sorry, AMA. Ask me anything. Yes. It should really be an a, a triple a ask Anne anything but we we're doing that we're doing the ama so and then once the problem with working with paint that's this thin is you do have to unload your brush like otherwise it's going to make puddles right you're going to have puddles so once you get your paint you know you pick up a bit of this green paint you want to take a lot of it off you don't want big puddles like that you want to take enough of it off and sometimes i'll do a line on my fingernail to see how controlled it is. You know, if I can draw a, a fine little line without seeing a big puddle, I'm good. And then I'm just gonna kind of kind of paint that in. And the point of using paint that's this thin is that you, you're you blending it automatically. Like this is a technique which I call layering, which some other people call different things. Um, but essentially it's wet or into dry. So your base coat, the gray here, is all dry. And I'm taking wet green and I'm trying to make it blend into what I've already got. And the key to doing that is thinner paint. 
And the key to getting that controlled thinner paint is to pay, put very little bit on your brush. Just to give you an idea that you can see, I usually load up my brush about this much. You can see a light blue on there. And then I even take some of that off. And then I can do tiny little dots or lines or whatever I want. I can hit all the little buckles and details and eyeballs that I want because I've got so little paint on my brush. So I have much better control. When you talk about layering, do you always mean layering with glazes and not layering with opaque paint? Um, I, sometimes I do use layering with opaque paint. Sorry, that's my boyfriend, David Diamondstone. He is also a painter, um, a very good one. And uh, so sometimes I will, I will use layering to mean thicker paint sometimes, especially if I'm blocking in layers. I'll say that a lot. I'm blocking in layers. Mm -hmm. Layering to me usually is a thinner paint application, although usually not as thin as these glazes mm -hmm. because I want to actually see the paint go down. So that's a, that's actually a, a problem I had when I was a beginner. Everybody was telling me that it had to look like skim milk. <laughs> and so I thinned it too much. Um, that's why I find dairy products to be poor uh, representations for paint consistency. <laughs> um, but that's what they used to say. Uh, blending, layering is a type of blending, Grim. Although a lot of people use blending to mean wet into wet. And by wet into wet, we mean putting down a color and then grabbing another color and blending it into it while both are still wet to create a blend in that way. This is a less precise blend. It's more organic. It can be very good for things like animals. Um, and this paint is very thin, so it's not doing very well at this. Usually with the wet and wet, you all you do want thicker paint. But you can see how, since both paints are wet, I can kind of feather them together a little bit and get that blend. Um, there you go. So it goes from that medium dark gray up to a lighter gray now. So that's, I call it wet and wet blending. Some people just call it blending. <laughs> yes, image of betrayal, I feel your pain. Uh, milk, when people use that skim milk directive, I'm, it should be the consistency of skim milk. Like, I don't have milk in the house. Come on, I'm dairy free, mostly. Except for Parmesan cheese, because, well, if you're going to cheat, you may as well cheat with really good Parmesan, right? Uh, smooshing, yes. Animals equals smooshing. That's what I call it when I do it. Actually, when I, I used to teach, uh, I've, I've taught kids to mini paint, and uh, I coined the term smooshing for my kid class a long time ago, and they loved it. So yeah, wet, wet into wet blending, I tend to call smooshing. It is also the type of blending that if you've heard of two brush blending, two brush blending is wet into wet blending, but you're using a, a separate brush. You have an extra brush and you're using that to blend. Um, I, I apparently do two brush blending with one, bl one brush. I just find it more efficient. I would never remember to reach for the other brush. Uh, so I just, uh, I just use my, my initial brush that I lay everything down with to do wet blending. Um, so, but I mean, as with any hobby, right, you're going to get people in different regions, people from different communities that have different terms that they've adopted for various techniques, right? So sometimes it's useful to just ask, well, what do you mean by, you know, um, do you mean this? Do you mean that? What do you think? It, what, what does this word mean to you? Um, because even the thing that I call glazes has been called like in Europe, they used to call it juices. Um, so it's, you know, it's, they might still. Uh, so everybody uses terms differently. So just be, be prepared for it. We've tried, everybody wants to standardize everything, but everybody wants to standardize everything to their own uh, dialect. So I think it's gonna uh, agree to disagree for a while. That's why I try to explain what I'm doing whenever I use a term. Uh, so we can thank David for that question. So now I've got a nice green thing going on in there and I like that. And this is looking, this is looking pretty good. This is, uh, this is looking like metal to me. It may need a little bit more. Um, yeah, it may need a little, little bit more here and there, a little more adjustment. Like I could definitely take the weight a little bit higher, I think, here. And really it's just at this point, kind of me looking at it critically and saying, okay, what doesn't look right? What am I missing here? Maybe I'm missing a little bit of a stronger punched highlight there on the corner. Okay, the underside, this looks good now. I'm happy with that. I'm really quite happy with this. Um, that looks good. And we've got our secondary shadow there. Now, usually um, you're going to have a darker shadow going down here. Now, what I could do is I could be also reflecting. What can I do? This is a good skin tone right here, right? But it is a shadow. And so it's really hard to do that in a, in a dark shadow. So maybe I could do it. And you don't have to feel like you have to reflect everything. You're mostly going to get reflections of color from something that's up close or really vibrant. 
which is why, you know, you're going to pick up some blue from the sky. You're going to pick up some of the brown from the hair because it's really close to the, the scythe here. You know, you're going to pick up some green from the foliage because sunlight's falling on trees all around you. And so they've got some strong greens out there. Um, but you also can kind of say, well, this is a little farther apart and it's in shadow here. So it's really not going to reflect that skin tone. You can make that call. All righty. Excellent. Well, we've got, uh, it's, it's 11, so it's time to wrap it up. I'd like to thank everybody who stuck around from our two gigantic raids today. And thank you to uh, Miniatures Den and CNOT for raiding us. It's awesome. I love getting big raids. I'm happy to meet you all. Uh, and uh, Justin, who are we going to be raiding in turn? Let's pass on the love. Well, let's see here. On our on our regulars list, we do have um, Zambies and Mocha. Ooh, so, let's do Mocha. Let's just, do Mocha. I haven't raided Mocha? Mocha in a while. Yeah. I like Mocha. Oh, Mocha's looking at 25 people? Let's let's bust her. Let's do it. Mocha is fantastic, everybody. She's uh, she's uh, a happy, happy lady and very talented. And uh, I remember when she first started entering the Reaper Comp painting competition. <laughs> and uh, I love I love Mocha. So let's get her. Let's get her. She's, she's going to be just absolutely thrilled at a giant rainbow. Like oh, that. yeah, she's, she is. She's super. She's a great. She's so nice, guys. Give her our love. Yeah. Okay, give her our love. And and again, thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Thanks to all the, the new people who came in and stuck around. I hope to see you in the future. 1130 a.m. Central every day of the week. Uh, and we'll see you later. Bye. And actually, if oh. you liked this. You're going to have oh, right. Clever Crow on at 4 p.m. Central today. Boop. That's in three hours from now. And uh, if you guys want to come hang out with uh, us and Proctor, we should have. I don't know who, know who our guest is today, but I'm sure it'll be good. So thank you guys very much again for coming out. Thank you for sticking around after the raids. Uh, we have a fantastic community. We would love it if you joined us. Um, follow us. You know, check us out on Twitter, Instagram, all the socials. Um, and, you know, if you really want to, check out ReaperMini.com for all of our products. Thank you guys very much. Tell Mocha we said hi. Spread the Reaper love. And most importantly, guys, keep being awesome. See ya.